Oh, that's a good one. So like I said, this is a juice box, really cool boat. Uh, I actually bought the boat off a of marketplace. One of the um, cool features of this boat, or one of the interesting features, is that it has a square bow. Uh, Brandon, if you can zoom in and show that. Basically we do that so you have more room for the guys on the front that are shocking. You'll see that momentarily. And just to go through the, the very rudimentary um, aspect behind, behind how this boat works, is the boat itself is a cathode, and then these are anodes. So. These are our droppers that are going into the water. Again, this will make more sense once we actually get in the water. This is going in, we've got elect electrical current, and what we're doing is we're, we're creating a circuit, right? So anytime you, anytime you have electricity, you're simply just creating a circuit. It's kind of like plumbing, honestly. Um, so what we're doing is utilizing the generator and then the control box, which we'll go over in a, in a moment. We're basically creating an electrical field in front of and under the boat. So the cool thing about this setup is we can move the booms, which are these bad boys. We can move them in and out. Um, there's just all kinds of ways to, to adjust how we're promoting or putting the electrical current into the water. Um, Another cool aspect of the boat, I'm not gonna show you this, but the underside is actually not painted. So if you notice right here, this is painted, looks like a good old fashioned John boat. The underside, we've actually sanded off about two thirds of the boat. And that's how we're creating that electrical field. There's a lot of science behind it, but we can break it down to basically just creating a circuit. The fish themselves, what's happening there is as we put the electrical current into the water, water is conductive, right? Just like, just like metal would be. And then also, we as humans are conductive because we're what two-thirds water I guess so the same thing for the fish so as the fish are in that electrical field the electrical or the electricity is going through the water into the fish and it basically just causes muscle spasms does not kill the fish big misconception a lot of times people are like oh man do, do you kill the fish with electricity no it doesn't kill them at all it shocks them they have a muscle spasm float up the top we catch them with the net put them in the live release well then we'll do our studies or our our length and weight pretty much and then go from there so with that being said release well coming back to the back of the boat this is our genie uh, it's a honda eu 7000 is that's a fancy way to say it. it's a really expensive generator but it's really good it's really quiet as far as generators go Got a Tahatsu four-stroke. Actually, really impressed with this motor. First Tahatsu I've ever had. Happy with it. It's a 50 horsepower, I think. And then this is the the kind of the primary feature. This is a Smith Root Apex Predator uh, electric shocking device. Not going to get in the weeds in on this at all. But basically, this is how we adjust all of the electrical parameters that we're going to utilize to do the shocking. And you adjust the electrical parameters in regards to your conductivity of the water, salinity content, um, hardness, um, microscopic algae content. There's all kinds of stuff that we won't get into because it's not going to nerd out on it too far. But either way, Smith Root, uh, there's another manufacturer in the United States. Uh, but in my opinion, these are the best, the best ones that you can get. Coming forward, we've got our safety equipment and all that stuff. Um, Here's another important aspect of this. So we're talking about electricity and water, right? So the number one thing we want to do is be safe. With that being said, this system has two foot switches. So the driver or the operator, as well as the person on the front of the boat that's actually scooping the fish, have to be stepping on this pedal at all times. Otherwise, think about this as like a light switch. Um, if, both light, if both light switches are not on, i.e. pressing down on them, then there's no actual electricity 
going into the water. So if you were on the bow, you fell over, obviously your foot would come off of this. So therefore there's no electrical current in the water at the time. A lot of good electric or a lot of good safety redundancies on this boat, and especially through the Smith Root system. Again, I can't say enough about how good how good of a system that is. So that's the overview. Um, basically we'll get on the water and I'll show you guys kind of how, you know, two guys on the front, two nets, uh, me in the back driving, we'll get the parameters right on the electrical aspect of it and catch some fish with electricity. So here is the, the fruits of our labor. Uh, this is a 18 month old fish, uh, so really good growth rates. Basically this is what we're trying to do, what we're trying to accomplish. As you can see here, we've got a bunch of bowfin that are invasives that we're trying to get out of here. So we've got probably 20 of them out today. Again, the bass are looking really good. Uh, the bass are tagged, so that way we can go back through our records. I'll try to show you that if I can, the document, but go back through our records and track the, the, the growth rates and patterns as well as the relative weight uh, of these fish. So. Again, these guys are looking good. Really solid fish. Telling me about 18 months old. All right, guys, so we're now starting to work up our fish after we completed our fishery survey. What we're looking for is basically just the length and weight of each fish, as well as checking the fish for tags or applying new tags if the fish don't currently have one. In regards to the tags, these are pit tags, uh, and they're basically just a, a small tag about the size of a grain of rice, easily inserted just to just blow the dorsal fin of each fish. And the whole principle of this is just to give us a way to identify each fish. So once we can identify the fish after each recapture, whether it be through fishing or electric fishing, we can check the length and weight and that gives us uh, a good idea of what their growth rate is like as well as the overall health of the fish. So again length, weight, document and then come back and recapture and that gives us a, a good way to see how well the fish are doing. Also we're looking at relative weight. Relative weight is simply a, a weight established by the American Fishery Society that gives us uh, you know an, an idea of what the fish should weigh based on however long it is. So basically if the fish is 18 inches it should weigh X amount of pounds and that's just again based on a relative overall weight of largemouth bass throughout the United States. So the tagging program is super beneficial and then uh, just recording, recording the data of the length and weight of all these fish just gives us a good overview and then once we have an overview of how well the fish are doing, how healthy they are and how well they're growing, then we can amend our fisheries program in regards to what the fish are doing.